In our number 10 spot today, we have Fyodor Makhnov. Fyodor was born in June of 1878 in what would now be modern day Belarus. As a child, he began to grow quite quickly, measuring six foot seven when he was just 14 years old. He of course needed custom made clothes and even a custom made bed. And it is said that his boots were so big that other children could hide in them while playing hide and seek. Because of the times he lived in, as well as his exceptional height, at just 16 years old, he began to perform in the circus, where it is said he grew to be eight foot two. Someone of this size is going to have quite the appetite. You need a lot of fuel to keep that body going. And it is said that in an average daily breakfast, he would eat 20 eggs, eight loaves of bread, and would drink two liters of tea. And that's just for breakfast. Scientists would often approach him to ask if he would sign a contract for ownership of his body after he passed, but he always refused because he was afraid that if he signed the contract, he would be killed. Sadly, he would pass away at quite an early age. In 1912, he passed at just 34 years old. He left behind his wife, who was tall for a woman, but at the time, still stood three feet and three inches shorter than him, as well as four children. Guys, before we get into number nine, don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. In our number nine spot today, we have Bernard Coyne, also referred to as Bernard the Giant. He was born in Iowa on July 27th, 1897. His true height is still disputed. Some people say he was eight foot two, some say he was eight foot four, and some say he was as tall as eight foot eight. And whichever it really was, Bernard was clearly over eight feet tall, which, especially in the 1800s, was unbelievable. Bernard's height can be attributed to a rare syndrome called unicoidal infantile gigantism, colloquially known as daddy long leg syndrome. Apparently, Bernard's parents for a while would exhibit their son in order to earn money. They'd put him on display, but eventually, they stopped because they feared it might put them in the spotlight of God's wrath. I mean, yeah, no worries. Don't worry about the effect it would have on your kid. Just worry about the wrath of God. As Bernard got older, of course, people wanted to recruit him for the same sort of thing. They wanted him to put himself on display in exchange for money, but he would turn down these offers because he just wanted to live a normal life. Bernard was so tall that during World War I, he was actually rejected by the army due to his tall stature. Like many of the people on this list, Bernard would pass at quite a young age. In just 1921, Bernard died at the age of 23. In our number eight spot today, we have Zan Shichai. Zan was born in China in the 1840s, but he would later move to England and tour around known as Chang Wu Gao. Before his move, however, he grew to be seven feet, nine inches tall, and he was actually appointed as a member of the emperor's court. His move to England was initially supposed to be just a short trip, but he would go on to stay for two years because thousands Thousands of people paid three shillings just to see him and his tall stature. He went on to tour throughout the rest of Europe as well, and sometimes during his show, he would be displayed beside a little person in order to really dramatize just how tall he was. And in 1881, he went on to join P.T. Barnum's circus. Zahn passed away in 1893, and based on his wishes, although he was loved and had intrigued the attention of thousands, his funeral was only attended by 50 of his friends. It is that since he was so tall, his coffin measured eight and a half feet long. In our number seven spot today, we have Adam Rayner. So many of the people on this list started out growing quite tall at young ages, but that couldn't be further from the truth for Adam. In fact, Adam was actually below average height for the beginning of his life, so much so that he was being turned down from the army during World War I because he wasn't tall enough. Adam was born in Austria in 1899, and at his first attempt to join the army, he was only four foot six. He tried to join again the following year, but was rejected. And at 19 years old, he measured only four foot eight. Just a couple of years later, however, at age 21, things would drastically change and he would soon reach a height of seven foot one. This fast paced and late growth spurt caused him some troubles though, because as he grew, his spinal cord curved. Eventually, Adam went on to get surgery to try and stop his pituitary gland from creating more growth hormones, but this did not stop it entirely and nearly just slowed the pace at which he grew. His health would continue to decline because of his condition and it left him blind in one eye, deaf in one ear, and eventually his curved spine left him unable to get out of bed. Adam passed away at the age of 51 years old after reaching a height of seven foot eight. In our number six spot today, we have Agnes Maskell. Agnes was born in Scotland in 1825, and it is said that he is quite the anomaly because he didn't have any kind of condition that caused him to grow so tall. He just 
was. And because of the fact that at birth he was so small, doctors weren't sure if he was going to survive. Agnes might not be the tallest man on this list, but he sure wasn't small. He measured at 7 foot 9, but he was also just a massive person with great strength, said to weigh 500 pounds, and had the ability to lift a ship's anchor. It is said that Agnes would often receive requests from people who wanted to wrestle him, which is absolutely hilarious, but that one man changed his mind after he shook hands with Agnes, and Agnes continued to shake his hand until it bled. A little dramatic for sure, but I appreciate the effect. In 1849, Agnes joined the circus and would tour many countries before going into real estate and opening a store. In 1863, Agnes passed away as a result of brain fever. In our number five spot today, we have Robert Wadlow. Robert was born on February 22nd, 1918, and although he was an average size at birth, by age five, he was already five foot four. Like, that's almost my height. Imagine an actual toddler walking around the size of a grown ass man. New definition to the terrible twos. That's just kind of horrifying. Try to put him in a timeout, but you have to like square up. <laughs> By 17 years old, he was standing at eight foot one, making him one of the, if not the tallest teenager ever. His huge appetite had him consuming 8,000 calories a day, but being this tall isn't all glitz and glamor, and it can come with some very serious side effects. He had trouble walking because of his fast growth, and this required him to have braces on his legs as well as use a walking stick. Unfortunately, an ill-fitted brace would eventually lead to his untimely death. In 1940, Robert received a new leg brace that didn't fit properly, and just one week later, this brace caused a blister. Seems like a minor inconvenience, but this blister went on to become really infected. This infection very sadly went on to take Robert's life at the early age of just 22 years old. In our number four spot today, we have Anna Haining Bates. Anna was born in Nova Scotia in August 1846, and by the time she was 22 years old, she was already standing at a height of seven foot six. At age 16, Anna went to into show business because it was very clear she was taller than the average female. She began touring around and in 1865 had a frightening moment at Barnum's Museum when it caught fire and she was too tall to escape through a window. She thought she had met her end because the stairs were on fire but thankfully she was saved when employees broke the wall and she was lifted out with a crane. In 1871, Anna met another super tall person named Martin Van Buren Bates who was also known as the Kentucky Giant and who was 7 foot 8. The pair got married and were often exhibited at circuses as the tallest married couple in the world. Anna ended up passing away in 1888 at the age of 41. In our number three spot today, we have Joseph Edward Beaupre. Joseph is a man who was actually born in my home province of Saskatchewan in 1881, so imagine my shock when I realized that I had never even heard of him before. Joseph's parents were average height, so of course they were shocked when, by age nine, their son had already outgrown them. At the age of 17, he stood at seven foot one and is said to have been able to lift an 800 pound horse. By the time 1904 rolled around, Joseph was eight foot three and he tried to become a cowboy, but realized that this probably wasn't the career for him considering his feet touched the ground while he was riding a horse. At 21, he joined the circus, but as one can imagine, this took quite a toll on him and it is said that he was also dealing with tuberculosis at the time, which is just crazy. Sadly, the story takes quite a dark turn as at age 23, after a performance and after coughing up blood, Joseph went unconscious and never woke up again. The circus refused to pay his burial expenses and his father was unfortunately too poor to afford it, which meant that his body remained with the undertakers who began displaying it in store windows and museums. Joseph's body would remain with people who never should have had it in the first place until 1989, over 80 years after his death, when it was finally released to his surviving family members who then cremated it. In our number two spot today, we have Patrick Cotter O'Brien. Patrick was born in Ireland in January of 1760, and he grew to be eight foot one, which made him one of the first people to be known to grow past eight feet tall. At 18 years old, he began working as a bricklayer because he didn't need a ladder to reach the top of the cottages like the rest of those he worked with. Like many people on this list, Patrick found himself in a life of show business where he just called himself O'Brien. 
Ryan. It is said that he had to travel around in a carriage that was made specifically for him because of his size, and one day when this carriage was pulled over by a highwayman, when this guy saw Patrick, he ran the other way because he was terrified of his large stature. Sadly, Patrick's size took quite a toll on his body and eventually led to his death, which occurred on September 8th, 1806, when Patrick was 46 years old. In our number one spot today, we have Arthur Cayley. Arthur was born in Soldi, Isle of Man in 1824, and while for the beginning of his life he was average size, in his late teens he suddenly began to grow quite tall, reaching a height of 7 foot 11 and earning the nickname Manx Giant. Arthur was on display at many exhibits because of his height, and he traveled to places like Manchester, London, and Paris, but suddenly he disappeared. His mother explained that he had passed away and that he was already buried, but people were suspicious because it is said that just a few weeks earlier, his life was insured for $2,000. We still see it today, people committing insurance fraud, so it's not really that far-fetched of an idea. And here's what really happened. Arthur was not dead. He instead had traveled to the United States to join P.T. Barnum's circus. During his time in the circus, he was marketed as Colonel Routh Goshen, the Arabian giant. It wasn't until his true death in 1889 that his previous life as the Manx giant was revealed and the whole story was complete. All right, starting this off at number 10, we have Brakim Takiula. Now, he's actually joint 10th alongside a guy called Mortiza, but I could only choose one to be at number 10, I'm afraid. So, sorry, Mortiza. Mortiza, you're still pretty tall though. Born in 1982, Brahim is from Morocco and stands at 8 foot 1. He underwent treatment in Paris in 2006 to help treat the tumour that was causing his unstoppable growth. Now, Thankfully, it worked and the growth hormones in his blood returned to a normal level. Despite this though, Brahim is still famous for apparently having the largest feet on the planet at 15 inches and he actually has specially designed shoes to help support his weight. Alright, next up for our number 9 now, we have Bernard Coyne. Now, he was born in 1897 in Iowa, and when he was conscripted into the US Army during World War I, he was measured at being 8 foot 2 inches tall. Bernard had something called Daddy Long Leg Syndrome, which involves his body totally ignoring the release of estrogen that's telling him to stop growing. Bernard died at the age of just 23 from a glandular disorder that left him with a hardening liver. At this point, some reports even put his height closer to 8 foot. Four. All right, next up at number eight, we have Don Cola. Born in 1925, Don was of normal height until he shot up at 10 years old and eventually reached 8 foot 2 inches tall. Now, if any of you guys watching this remember the 1970s, you might remember Don as the tallest person in the world at that time. What's interesting about him is that he actually had a twin sister who didn't share his extraordinary height. She remained at 5 foot 9 inches tall, which meant the two held a world record for the biggest difference in height between two twins at 29 inches. Moving on to number seven, now we have Vikas Upal from India, who was born in 1986. Although he was never officially measured by Guinness World Records, there have been a number of other organizations that confirmed his height was 8 foot 3 inches, making him the tallest man in India. Over the years, there were a number of publications that put his height all the way up to 8 foot 10, which would have put him at the number 2 spot on this list, but most people think that's a bit of an exaggeration. He had huge proportions. His hands were actually said to be 13 inches long. Long and his feet 19 inches, but he did appear to be totally in proportion. Sadly, though, Vikas died in 2007 after a failed brain tumor operation. Okay, for our number six now, guys, we have Sultan Kosen. Born in 1982 in Turkey, Sultan is currently the tallest man in the world, standing at eight foot and three inches. Here's a picture of him with the shortest man in the world at that time. Look at the difference. Like others on this list, he actually had a normal childhood until the age of 10 at which point he rocketed over six foot tall. His growth was caused by a tumor in his brain and it showed no signs of stopping into adulthood. In 2010, doctors attempted to remove the tumor by focusing radiation at it and amazingly, it worked. It was a success. As of 2012, Sultan has officially stopped growing, but nobody seems to be taller than him yet. All right, coming in at number five now, we have Edouard Beaupré. Born in 1881, Edouard is the tallest Canadian on this list and stood at 8 foot 3 inches tall. He was the oldest of 20 children. Yes, 
20. At age 9, he was 6 foot 1. That's the same height as me. But it wasn't just his height that made him remarkable. Edouard was also an impressive strongman. At the age of just 17, he reportedly lifted up an 800 pound horse. He also spoke French, English and 3 Native American languages. He spent the next 6 years touring with a circus before dying from a pituitary gland tumour at the age of 23. Alright, moving on to our number 4 now, we've got Vaina Mylyrin. He was from Finland and was once the world's tallest living person. Interestingly, he was also the tallest soldier of all time as he was part of the Finnish Defence Forces. On multiple occasions throughout his 20s, he was measured at being 7 foot 3 inches tall, but interestingly, Vaina actually underwent a growth spur in his late 30s and shot up over a foot to 8 foot 3 inches tall. Now, if that wasn't impressive enough, he also apparently had huge hands that spanned the size of a bowling pin. What? Alright, coming in at number 3 now, we have John F. Carroll. This is an interesting one because John's case has been disputed over the years. He was born in 1932 and by age 27 he was measured at exactly 8 foot, but John had a severely disfigured spine and without it apparently he would have been 8 foot 7 and 3 quarter inches. Born in Buffalo, New York, he became known as the Buffalo Giant after a growth spurt saw him grow 7 inches in just a few months. He was diagnosed with giantism and although doctors trying to treat his spine condition it did get worse and John had actually shrunk 4 inches by the time he passed away at the age of 37. Ok next up at number 2 now we have John Rogan at 8 foot 9 inches. John was born in Tennessee in 1865 and was apparently a normal size up until the age of 13. Then he underwent a massive growth spurt that left him needing crutches to even stand up. By age 17 he couldn't walk at all. Unable to work for a living John would stand at the train station and sell portraits of himself to curious tourists. He was said to always be friendly and easy going. Although everybody knew he was probably the tallest man alive at that time, he wasn't officially measured until his death in 1905 and was buried under concrete to stop curious scientists from trying to study him. Alright, and finally, at number one, we have the tallest human of all time, Robert Wadlow. Robert is the tallest confirmed living human of all time, standing at 8 foot and 11 inches, just 1 inch shy of 9 foot. His extraordinary height was caused by hypertrophy of the pituitary gland, which resulted in his body producing way too many growth hormones. Robert was born in Illinois in 1918. At the age of 5, he was already wearing clothes meant for 17 year olds. The following year he actually outgrew his own parents and by that time he was 8 years old he stood at 6 foot 2. That's actually an inch taller than I am now. Now sadly Robert died due to an infection from a leg brace at the age of 22 and it took 12 pallbearers to carry his coffin. Starting us off at number 10 we have Kazam otherwise known as Shaquille O'Neal. For any of you who have seen that movie man oh man I rewatched it recently and I do not think it holds up. But if there are Kazam fans watching, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Anyway, back to Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal was born March 6, 1972 and little did his mother know, she would be giving birth to one of the most famous basketball players of all time as well as a modern giant. Shaq clocks in at 7 feet 1 inch which is 2.16 meters in height and has quite the list of hilarious pictures comparing his size to other popular celebrities. One of my favorites is a picture of him with A-list comedian Kevin Hart. We all know Kevin is a shorter guy but next to Shaq he looks like a tiny villager. Luckily for Kevin, Shaq is just one large friendly giant unless he's on the court. Shaq no longer plays basketball but is now a sports analyst on NBA related TV shows and even though nowadays he's usually seen just sitting at a desk, this man is still a giant. At number 9 we have Anna Haining Bates. Born in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia back in August of 1846, Anna was just like every other child until she started a bit of a growth spurt. A growth spurt that never ended. By age 5 she was already 4 feet 8 inches. That's 142 centimeters and weighed over 100 pounds. That's over 45 kilograms. Finally, at age 22, she came in at 7 feet 6 inches. That's 229 centimeters and weighed 350 pounds, which is 159 kilograms. Bates went into show business around the age of 16 and would often be shown opposite to a little person to show the Incredibles difference in 
size. But being that tall has its disadvantages. In July of 1865, Anna almost burned to death during a fire at the famous P.T. Barnum Museum. The stairs were engulfed in flames and she was too tall to jump out the window. Luckily for her, she was saved by other museum employees who broke through walls to escort her out and was then assisted with a crane. That's crazy. It's hard enough sometimes getting emergency crews to the scene, let alone a crane. But hey, I'm guessing they didn't have the same kind of Toronto traffic as we do nowadays. Anna then later went on to marry another giant by the name of Martin Van Buren, aka the Kentucky Giant, who was 7 feet 3 inches tall. She later got pregnant with two children, but they both tragically died at birth. Anna herself later died in 1888 at the age of 41. At number 8, we are going back to the NBA with a basketball superstar, Yao Ming. This famous NBA superstar was born September 12, 1980 in Shanghai, China. Yao Ming's height is an incredible 7 feet 6 inches or 229 centimeters. This giant featherless being has a wingspan of 226 centimeters, which is basically just as tall as he is, and his feet are size 18. Those aren't shoes, those are freaking water skis. Before coming to play for the NBA, he played for the Shanghai Sharks in the Chinese Basketball Association, and was then drafted to the NBA in 2002 to the Houston Rockets, where he there played until 2011. In February of 2017, Ming was elected as the chairman of the Chinese Basketball Association. Now, there is also a documentary titled The Year of Yao, filmed during his rookie year with the Rockets, as well as a book he co-wrote with NBA analyst Rick Butcher, titled Yao, A Life in Two Worlds. So if you want to get to know him a little bit more, check those out. If you want to see how this giant dominated the court, I'm sure you can find tons of old Rocket games all over the internet. At number 7, staying in China, but going back to the 1840s, we have Chang Yu Sing. Sing grew up to be 7 feet 9 inches tall, which is 236 centimeters, and was appointed as a member of the Emperor's Court. Later on in his life, he left China for England on what was only supposed to be a brief visit, but that brief visit ended up turning out to be a two-year stay. During his stay in England, many people would stop him and pay three shillings just to see him. Later on, taking advantage of the extra cash, he went on tour through the rest of Europe and was shown off alongside another little person just like Anna Haining Bates. He later also joined P.T. Barnum Circus and was also known to have many female admirers. By the sounds of it though, none of them lasted because I could not find any info on whether he was actually ever married. Maybe he just liked the bachelor life too much. <laughs> I get it. Anyway, Chang Yu Sing later passed away in 1893 and his funeral was only attended by 50 of his closest friends due to his own wishes. His coffin was 8 feet 5 inches long, that's 260 centimeters, and I don't want to imagine what it was like being one of those pallbearers. If I was one of them, I probably would have let him down. At number 6, we have Patrick Cotter O'Brien. Patrick was born in Kinsale, Ireland on January 19, 1760. He grew up to be 8 feet 1 inch tall, which is 244 centimeters, and he was the first of 13 known people to grow past 244 centimeters. At the age of 18, he worked as a bricklayer. Needless to say, unlike the rest of his bricklaying colleagues, he did not need a ladder to reach the top of the cottages that they were working on. After he had enough of bricklaying, just like the most of the other giants on my list, he went into show business where he later went just by the name of O'Brien. He traveled around in a specially made carriage and apparently he was once stopped by a highwayman who went seeing the giant O'Brien inside, immediately ran away with his tail between his legs. His massive weight took quite the toll on his body which brought him to his death on September 8th, 1806 at the age of 46. I'm sure his weight caused him many troubles and struggles but I bet it wasn't easy for the horses pulling him in the carriage either. That being said, the more horses, the easier it is to pull an 8 foot tall giant. That's the old saying, right? Coming in at our halfway point at number 5, we have another Canadian, Joseph Edward Beaupre. Joseph was born in Willowbunch, Saskatchewan on January 9th, 1881. His parents were what was considered average height and honestly so was he until the age of 3 and he started growing like crazy. By the age of 9, he outgrew his own parents and he was 6 and a half feet tall. At the age of 17, he was so big that it is reported that he lifted an 800 pound horse. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, then that means he was not only tall, this guy was yoked too. He reached his full giant potential at the age of 23 at 8 feet 3 inches. That's 251 centimeters. He had to wear giant custom made shoes that were size 22. If Yao Ming's shoes are water skis, then these are freaking snowboards for each foot. He had dreams of becoming a cowboy, but gave up because his feet would still touch the ground while atop his bucking bronco. He later joined a circus as well as hoping to capitalize on his size, but it took its toll on him, especially because he suffered from tuberculosis. He sadly died on July 3rd at the age of 23. Now, this story gets pretty sad. After his death, the circus refused to help his father pay for the burial, so his body stayed with the undertakers, who then started displaying his corpse in store windows and museums. In 1907, his corpse was found in an old circus hangar and was then given to Montreal University, where it was mummified and stored. In 1970, Ovilla Lesperance, descendant of Joseph, requested her relative's body back, but was at first denied because the university didn't want his body stolen and put up for display again. Finally, Ovilla got her 
relative's body back and Joseph was cremated in September of 1989, 85 years after his death. Even though his circus employers and maybe the Montreal University people are now deceased, I still have one thing to say to you. Screw you guys. At number 4 we have Arthur Cayley. Arthur Cayley was born in Solby Isle of Man in 1824 and was considered a normal sized human being until his late teens when he started growing much much taller. Maybe it was an after effect of puberty. He reached 7 feet 11 inches tall which equals to 241 centimeters. He weighed over 392 pounds which is 178 kilograms. His size earned him the name Manx Giant and he was known to be a bit more wide than his other giant friends as well. He was frequently seen in exhibits in Manchester, London and Paris before suddenly and mysteriously disappearing. His mother reported that he was dead but many doubted this because his life had been insured for 2,000 pounds only a few weeks prior. They believe it was a case of insurance fraud and that a tree was actually buried in his place. Sure enough, Cayley was not actually dead. He traveled also to join P.T. Barnum's circus and he was known as Colonel Ruth Goshen, the Arabian Giant. His former life as the Manx Giant stayed a well kept secret until his death in 1889. At number 3 we have Angus McCaskill. Angus was born on the island of Bernay in Scotland back in 1825. The Guinness World Record books recognize him as the tallest true giant to have ever lived because his height was not caused by any kind of growth abnormality. Funnily enough, he was so small at birth that doctors didn't believe that he would survive. Now, Angus only grew to 7 feet 9 inches or 236 centimeters, which may not seem like much after a few of our friends on the list here, but trust me when I say this guy was still absolutely massive. He had the biggest chest ever, coming in at 203 centimeters or 80 inches around. He weighed in at 500 pounds. That's 227 kilograms in case you wanted to know. Oh, and by the way, he could lift a 2800 pound ship's anchor. He was also known to carry a 100 pound weight, which is 45 kilograms, for 10 minutes using only two fingers. Angus often received requests from people wanting to wrestle him. If those challengers didn't have the same size as Angus, they most certainly had guts. He then of course later joined the circus and toured through Cuba and the East Indies until going to Europe and North America. After retiring from the circus, he went into real estate and opened up his own store. Sadly, in 18 1963, he died from brain fever. Can you imagine rolling up to a house and seeing this guy out front? The outside is perfect and beautiful, but I don't know a damn clue what it looks like on the inside. Can you let me know? At number two, we have Bernard Coyne, aka Bernard the Giant. Original name, huh? Bernard was born in Anthon, Iowa on July 27th, 1897. His actual height is cause for dispute because some report him being 8 foot 2 inches, while others say he was 8 foot 4 inches, while even more people saying that he was 8 feet 8 inches. No matter what though, he was over 8 feet, which is over 20 240 centimeters tall. He was so tall that he was actually rejected by the army, probably because they could see him coming from miles away and that they were too scared that his rations would need to be three times the size of anyone else's. Unlike most other giant people whose height is a result of abnormalities in the pituitary gland, Bernard's height was from the unicoidal infantile gigantism, a very rare syndrome. His parents would put him on display for extra money when he was younger, but later decided against it because they didn't want to be on the receiving end of the wrath of God. <laughs> Good idea, jerks. Bernard preferred a quiet life and turned down countless offers to go on exhibit ever again. His shoes were a size 24 which means they're considered something I don't know bigger than a snowboard and he weighed in at 300 pounds which is 136 kilograms. He sadly passed away at the age of 23. Man, being put on display for a couple of extra bucks by your parents. <laughs> Too bad child services were not around yet. And finally coming in at our number one spot if you ever visited Clifton Hill on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls you'll know this guy. Robert Wadlow. Robert was born on February 22nd 1918 at a normal size. However, he quickly started growing at the age of 5 and he was already wearing clothes intended for teenagers. At age 8, he was taller than his 5 foot 11 inch father and could even carry him up the stairs. He then joined the Boy Scouts at age 13 and had to have his own uniform, tent and sleeping bag specially made for him. In 1936, he joined the Ringling Brothers Circus as a curiosity. He had a huge appetite and ate around 8,000 calories a day. In case you're wondering, the average human eats 2,000 to 2,400 calories a day. Damn, that guy can eat. He unfortunately suffered from some leg issues and had to wear leg braces and also often use a cane. But nevertheless, he kept growing. Sadly, one day, one leg brace was fitted improperly and ended up causing him a huge blister on his ankle, which then became infected. Tragically, the infection killed him at the age of 22 on July 15th, 1940. He was last measured June 27th, 1940 at 8 feet 11 inches, which is 272 centimeters. He was a true giant and not only was he actually missed, but so is his Niagara Falls statue at the Guinness Book of Records Museum. I remember countless trips where I actually measured myself up against him and that was a lot of fun. Miss you, Robbie.